Okay, so hello guys and welcome to another quick update video on the Z80 build. As you can see, it's progressed a lot since the last video, so I'll just give you a quick walkthrough of what's actually happened and show you what the plans are for the future. So first of all, here we can see the ROM and RAM chips. The top one here being the ROM, sorry, the RAM, and the bottom one here being the ROM. There's the Z80. There's actually a new socket there. Uh, things have changed slightly since the last update video. I've changed my plan slightly. So you can see the wiring over here is a little bit different. There's the decoder chip. Again, things have changed slightly. And that's the sem 4 LSO4 hex inverter just in there to deal with the clock generation part of the system. So I'll just quickly walk you through what I've done since the last time. I've completely wired the address bus that's now finished. So underneath this slight mess of wires in here, you can see uh, the address bus goes round and over to these two chips. Pretty much all the wires down in there and all the wires there are for the address bus. I've tried to use zip ties to keep it in check, but there's only so much I, I could do. Then the data bus is completely wired. Now, this is where changes start to occur. I'm now not going to be having these two buffers. I'm probably going to desolder the sockets and uh, desolder the decoding stuff that I did. Um, and I'll probably keep the decoder, but possibly use it for something else later on, I, d I don't know, I might keep them on there. Uh, the problem is I'm going to have issues with actually soldering around them. If you look on the back, there are the two decoder chips and that I've got fair, I've just got enough space to solder to them so there's a possibility I could do that providing I can get the wires in there uh, which hasn't actually been too bad, it looks worse than it actually is so anyway, why did I change my mind? Well, I was thinking about how I was actually going to interface and program this, and the only really logical option with the previous setup was to program ROM. And seeing as my ROM is not reprogrammable, it's one time only, um, that was going to be an issue. I would have to develop some sort of bootloader system so I could program RAM. But then, how was I actually going to send what I wanted programmed to the bootloader? Uh, and then I came across Grant Seal's Seal, I, know, I can't say the name Seal's website online, uh, and that's where this chip comes in, or the socket for this chip. Uh, this is actually uh, the 6850 ACIA, ACIA or UART. It's a serial communications chip, uh, and essentially this take uh, Grant's got a a ROM file which actually has a basic uh, assembler on there and uh, it also has all the code required to communicate with the serial chip and so you can actually use the serial terminal on your Windows PC and talk to this machine like you would do a Raspberry Pi or something of that nature so that's really cool and I'm really excited to use that it's going to make it a lot easier to program all of this I'll be able to write my own bootloaders and things like that and send the data over serially which is really nice so I'm very excited about that I'm then going to use this other header pin as uh, an output for the data bus and any other signals uh, as well as the remaining pins over here so I'm just going to use these as kind of like expansion headers for further modules and things like that. It's a little bit of a hack together this system but then that was kind of the point so I could learn as I go along and you know learn about the hardware and how things actually work. I'd like to thank the people of the EV blog forum online at this point they've been really helpful giving me the information that I need and helping helping me out with things and I've already learnt a lot from them uh, and continue to do so. So, you may wonder, well, that's okay but I swear serial uh, USB in particular or RS-232 has some different voltage levels to TTL. Well, that's where this cable comes in. Uh, it is a, a bit of a cheat, you could work in the actual hardware onto the board, but I just thought I'd make it easier for myself, so I bought this cable. Inside the USB 
head end of this cable there's actually a uh, bit of circuitry that does the conversion between 5 volt TTL signals from the board uh, to what the USB port on the computer can read. So that just makes it a lot easier and this cable actually has a 6 pin 0.1 inch pitch header kind of plug-in socket at the other end which just plugs straight in to this header here let me just plug that in so that's just going to plug in like that and that's how the serial communication will be done so that's really cool um, and I'm really excited to do that that begs the question however well if you're going to need the correct ROM to do that how are you going to program the ROM? Uh, you haven't discussed that yet. Well, this is where progress is also being made. I originally found an EEPROM programmer online, which I thought I was going to do, but I can't seem to get any of the software for that working. So, I'm going to write my own EEPROM programmer software and uh, put together my own little EEPROM programmer on a breadboard, uh, seeing as I'm not really going to be using that it that many times. Uh, I'll make the software available when it's done, but all it's essential it's it's actually not too difficult to actually write your own EEPROM programmer code once you understand what's going on with the hardware. It's going to use two 74HE595 shift registers to control the address bus for the ROM, and then just some I/O pins on an Arduino to control the data bus, uh, and it'll just write the ROM. Uh, the uh, ROM hex file straight onto this byte by byte uh, so it might take a bit of time but uh, you know as long as it works uh, I don't need anything too fancy to be honest I can do uh, any kind of editing on my Windows PC or anything like that so is there anything else that needs to be done to this well yes there is uh, first of all I need to add in capacitors for each of the chips uh, just to stabilize the current flow from the power supply uh, for them so that they, there aren't any glitches in the system. I'm going to add in a manual clock section. I'm going to add in a switch so I can switch between automatic kind of uh, crystal clock and uh, just a button to manually clock the CPU so you can slow the clock rate right down and just see what it's doing. I might add a few more LEDs to the data bus and actually reseat these LEDs uh, so that they're flush against the PCB. And finally I'm going to add in a reset switch as well. And once that's all, I'll probably desolder these sockets and just rejig things around with these header pins a little bit. And once that's all done, it'll be ready to go once the ROM is programmed. I'm still waiting on the communications chip to arrive, um, but once that's arrived and everything's going then uh, we'll be ready to rock so in the next video you will probably see a working system I hope uh, and I'll explain how the EEPROM programmer works in more detail in that video as well one more thing to mention actually uh, this uh, socket here for anyone who might be interested in copying this particular system providing it works uh, is actually the wrong width socket for the 6850IC. I made a, an error there. So what I'm going to do is make a little plug-in board with header pins that just plugs into that. Uh, it's not too big of an issue and it actually allows fairly nice access to the data bus on this board so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I may end up re completely rebuilding a fresh system once I've kind of done a lot more things with this so I can make something look really nice but this is very much a learning pro process so I'm not too worried about looks. I did add a nice acrylic, uh, clear acrylic plate onto the top as you can see here uh, which I think looks nice and the standoffs are working really well so I'm really happy with that. It does still look really nice. Uh, if you want to find this cable, then you can just buy them on eBay. Just search for USB to serial 5 volts TTL and it'll come up. Uh, this actually cost me £12, but it's really high quality, so I'm uh, very happy with it. Uh, and that's basically all for now, so I will see you guys in the next video.